saturation of water is 0.2, Pre pressure 1,000, that's time t equals zero. The initial is 1,000, right? And there's a, all the, this is sort of just your standard um, material properties or fluid properties for water and oil. Uh, the only little short caveat is that w here you're assuming that the formation volume factor of water and oil are both one. And so I think as we move forward and see the individual equations, normally there should be a BW over BO out there. But since it's one, since it's just one over one, they're not in, you won't see them in the equations, okay? So. Uh, so we need some material properties. These are relative permeability curves. These are the Corey Brooks uh, relationships. So at each time step, um, we're going to solve the pressure equation. That's here. There's not, this is why I was looking for that B, B over BW. Uh, in this case, you're not injecting or producing oil, so there's no, that term, that Q sub zero is not over there, and you don't have that, uh, you don't have that uh, B, B over BW doesn't show up there. So using the pressure solution, solve for the saturations, so we're going to take the pressures that we get up there, the PN plus ones, they'll go into these equations with these transmissibilities, and we're going to use the old saturation. And of course, at the first time step, the old saturation is the initial saturation, right? It's 0.2, the saturation of water. So we'll update that, and the, the, you know, this is just saying that the time step we can take is limited by the CFL condition. <coughs> so now, you know, uh, contrary to what we did before in single phase flow, now the T matrix actually changes every time because of the saturations. So here we just go through the actual computations uh, for you know, T of water, T of oil. Um, it, it, they're the same every, the half transmissibilities are unnecessary because this is homogeneous. Right? So while they change every time step, from block to block they don't change. Right? So initial, at the first time step, these are your transmissibility matrices for water and oil. Of course, we're going to add them together uh, to get this total transmissibility. Um, the other matrix, B, all of these other equations, the initial pressure source vector. So after you solve one step, these are the pressures you get. So initially they were 1,000. You can see they've changed. So at the end of step one, then you plug those values into the saturation equation. And initially, you don't see any change in the saturation. Well, I'm sorry, this is just the initial saturation. And then you'll see a slight change in the saturations after you update them. So these were the initial values, so those go in there uh, along with that Q vector, and, and that, those pressures all go into here, and then this is what comes out, right? So initially, you just have a tiny change in the saturation in the first grid block, but the other two haven't been touched yet, right? So it's moving left to right, okay? So those are just, uh, now the, the in the second step, uh, you have to implement your up, upwinding scheme. So in the first step, there's no fluid flow, right? At the initial conditions, there's no flow, right? Everything's the same. The pre there's no pressure gradient. Everything's 1,000, so there's no, there's no velocity vector to compute, so there it doesn't matter. But on the second step, now you have a pressure gradient. You have to compute or use your upwinding scheme for your relative permeabilities. Uh, now that you have upwinded relative permeabilities, now all of a sudden you do have 
even though everything was homogeneous to begin with, now you sort of have a, a heterogeneity because of the constituent responses change. So those are all the terms that go into the, both the water and the oil transmissibilities. So now you can see where this was zero in the first time step. Now there's, it's different. The oil transmissibility, add them together, take the current pressure, solve another implicit step, take the current saturation. See, in this case, uh, there was very only change was in the first one. Now take another step, you'll see it change again. So now the saturation is higher in the first grid block and moved a little bit in the second grid block. Take another time step. It's more of the same. So now you see that the saturations are even larger. Still hasn't got to the third block yet, and, and so on. Right. So if we go over here to MATLAB, we can actually solve that exact problem with three grid blocks. The, the uh, orange line, orangish line, the orangish line is the actual semi-analytic solution, Buckley-Levert, and the blue line is the three blocks, right? So there's only the block, the, the pressures are, uh, I'm sorry, the saturations are computed at the block centers. So the line there, just connects those guys. And technically it's wrong to connect them because, because that implies there's some linear slope between them when really they're discontinuous, right? There's one saturation value from here to here, there's one saturation value from here to here, and there's one saturation value from there to there, right? There's not a linear change in saturation. But it just sort of, with only three grid blocks, there would only be like three dots there. It would be a little bit hard to see what's going on. So again, that's not very accurate, right? It's not a very good match. Ideally, if our code was valid, right, the blue line would overlay the orange one. So what do we have to do to see if we actually coded it up right? Yeah. Let's try adding some grid blocks, right? Should get more accurate. So let's go from three to 10. better. Let's go from 10 to 100. good, right? So I think it's coded up right. Let's go from 100 let's go from 100 to 200. What's going on? Yeah, it's unstable for some reason. Uh, the reason, I mean, not, not for some unknown reason, the reason is that there's sort of the, the, the ratio of the of delta x to delta t is too small. And, and so we could probably fix that by taking more steps, more steps in time. With that, I think we'll uh, finish early today so I can go to my seminar and
we'll meet in the lrc,